Good morning, everybody. I'm assuming you can all hear me. Feel free to unmute yourselves for a moment and just say hello to each other. Hello, morning, everybody. everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're uh, passing the peace here this morning. <laughs> Definitely passing the peace. That is the big goal. Um, yeah, just a couple of announcements before we begin worship itself. And uh, first of all, I just want to thank the people that are helping us this morning. Um, the announcements include the fact I think, in fact, you guys can sort of all mute yourselves again. If you're not muted, go ahead and mute. Um, the, for security purposes, the church is actually locked. Um, and it's a little heartbreaking to say that. It turns out there's not an imminent threat right in our area. However, churches have been, especially churches that belong to the UCC and others sort of in the same alignment of values have been identified as potential targets either on today or over the Martin Luther King weekend or the day of the inauguration. And so the council has chosen for the next four days for the safety of people that might be coming and going from the building to try to discourage having us be a target by closing the building and just not having any in-person activities there. Um, we have an echo, so some not muted All right um so so i'm sorry that we're going to be a little quieter than usual but the world is not quiet and we're not being quiet we're just doing our usual let's keep each other safe and that's one of the ways that we love and respect each other and we're still celebrating worship we're still celebrating the passing the peaceful transition of power we're still honoring martin luther king and we are still celebrating community and how we love and honor and serve each other so to that end there are two events on martin luther king day that's tomorrow here in the valley one of them is in person there's going to be a walk it's a peace walk organized by our local buddhists um, and you can get all the details on Facebook. I'll send you the link and I will send you as much information as they pass to me. I'm in the loop with that. So they're sending me details about where they're going to start. They're going to end up at Schuler Park. They're going to begin at noon and they expect to take about 90 minutes for their walk and some of their celebrations. There's also a wonderful six o'clock Martin Luther King observance organized by the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship as well as the World Fellowship Center. They do this every year and they have some great speakers coming, including Valerie Tutson, who's a UCC storyteller, um, a woman of color, and well, the, there's a few great speakers. So again, the information is in the emails that I have been sending out. If for any reason you don't have that information, wave me down at the end of the service and I'll make sure to send it to you so you can participate. We will not be doing our like degreening of the sanctuary on Tuesday just for the safety of everybody. However, at 5.30 on Tuesday, the president has actually asked that churches should participate in a remembrance of those who have died and also sort of a, a ringing in of the peace. So we will be ringing the church bells at 5.30 on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we're going forward with our annual meeting at seven o'clock. And we'll be welcoming a new moderator and a new treasurer and saying thank you to those that have served for such a long time. So if you're able to make it, we do encourage you to be there on Zoom. Again, the link will be in the emails that we've been sending out. The only caveat for this is that if things do become a national emergency as they were about you know, over the Capitol, uh, we will postpone, but that would be a very extreme situation. So we hope that's not gonna happen and we'll be able to go forward with our meeting as planned. So watch email in case you're concerned. I believe those are the announcements for the life of the church. 
I'll make sure there's a PDF available for the annual report online so that if anybody wishes to retrieve it in advance of the meeting, which you certainly would want to do, you can download it and have it available. That being said, I'm going to turn us over to Chris's competent hands. Chris is um, providing all of our music. It's pre-recorded by many, many musical artists, but Chris is in the background help sharing it with us because when we closed the building, there was not a way for Alan to provide us with music live or recorded as he's between things. So let's listen to the centering music and appreciate these gifts. And a great big thanks to Jeanette for that. Feel free to unmute yourselves and give her a thank you. I see a lot of silent Ooh. thank yous. <laughs> nice job. Uh, nice. Very good. <laughs> thanks also to my teacher, Lauren, who was the other part of this, the duet. That's right. This was a duet. So right now we're going to turn to prayers of the people and then we will go to a prayer by Martin Luther King and conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Are there any prayers of concern that every, everyone here in the world of Zoom, anybody here wants to lift up out loud? And if you do, please unmute yourself and go ahead and share concern. Hopefully I can see you, but I'm not swearing I will. So Tom and Cheryl, go for it. Yeah. Just. Uh Longtime family friend, dear woman, uh, passed away with COVID uh, last week. And just, she was so wonderful. She was just one of those people you say, you're a saint. And so we will miss Lucille. Lucille. So prayers with, with gratitude for the life of Lucille and sorrow for her passing. Um, and as you name that, there are several people who have reported having family 
living with COVID right now and some who have lost people to COVID at the eight o'clock service. A couple of people mentioned uh, relatives who had died due to COVID and whole generations of families, whole little households that have come down with COVID over the holidays. So prayers for those living with it, being treated for it, those who are helping care for those with COVID. Um, other prayers of concern that you might wanna share. I see you, Kevin, go ahead and un unmute. Prayer. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful that Reverend Gail and Chris have vacation and prayer that they're rested and relaxed. And um, prayer for Pastor Nathan and Jennifer. And also prayer for my friend Holly, her father has lung cancer. And prayer for Max, that when his job changes company, he doesn't lose his job. And that his father is in poor health. Prayer for his father. And prayer for my friend Tina, who is in the healthcare field. And a bunch of people got COVID-19 and prayer that she didn't get it. Thank you, Kevin. So for Holly with lung cancer, for Max and his job and his father and Tina working in the healthcare field. Other I have prayers? prayer. Go yeah. for it, please. Um, I'm praying for a young mother who lives next door to me named Mira. And she's just really struggling emotionally with the three little boys and all this, you know, being stuck at home and stuff like that. So um, I pray that she, her, her body and soul will be lifted up and not get so stressed out or get de seriously depressed because of all this. <clears throat> so for the balance of body, mind, and spirit, right. your neighbor, Meryl, who's the mother of three little boys. So a lot of people are dependent on her. And I think many of us feel the weight right now, of the multiple sources of tension that are, are present in the world, political, economic, social, and the very real health pressures of COVID. So for all the ways that people are trying to tread water and keep their heads above water and find equilibrium and resilience and how we know this is incredibly challenging in these times. Other prayers of concern that you want to raise up out loud. Um, Sue, I'm just gonna go ahead and mention Jean if that's okay. I think that Jean is dialed in with us today. She was earlier and um, Jean had a fall and broke some bones in her body. And so she is at home mending, but we know that these are setbacks and discouraging events in our lives on top again of everything else that may be happening. And so prayers for Jean's whole body, wellness of heart, mind, and spirit, and that the bones will knit and independence and, and mobility will, will come back to you, Jean. Thank you for mentioning, Jean. I appreciate that. Um, Mom, did you want to? I just wanted. You muted yourself. <laughs> you, unmute, Mom. You un there you go, try again. I, okay, I wanted to mention a friend, Joyce, who is hospitalized right now with some complications. She's been treated with chemo and radiation for a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And a complication has been for her some respiratory problems with uh, pulmonary hypertension. And she and her husband have just been kind of through the war. So I'd like to pray for Joyce and Ted. For Joyce and Ted living with a complex form of cancer and all the treatments that go with it. And as we lift up Joyce and Ted, we lift up the Himmel rights. We lift up Tom and Cheryl. We lift up Deanna and Judy. We lift up several families, some of whom have shared with us and some of whom wish to remain confidential, living with so many forms of cancer. Um, and in different places along the journey, you know, sometimes in a really good and a stable place. But we know that there's, again, there's this tension when you live with an illness like this, that you sort of, you're vigilant, right? And so, um, and life is a different kind of life. And so 
for love and healing where it is possible for peace and dignity and comfort where this is called to be present in our bodies. And cancer is one thing that we name, COVID is one thing that we name, but there are people living with so many challenges um, and we do the body prayer, right? And we're not joking when we name the parts of our body. So feel free to move your hands around as we touch the parts of our body. And we're gonna start with our ears. Let's bless each other's ears. Let's bless each other's noses. Let's bless each other's mouths and think of the teeth and the tongue and the throat beneath your hands. Touch your hands to your throat. Think of your whole head and the brain within your skull and the things that are happening in our brains, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, mental health, all kinds of changes. Think as you touch the back of your neck about your spine and how much you depend on your spine and how some people's spines have been changed. Then be gentle and touch your shoulders if you're able. And then appreciate your elbows and your wrists. And then touch your heart and hold your hands to your lungs and then hold your hands to your abdomen. You think of your stomach, your pancreas, your kidney, your liver. You think about the GI tract that connects you from your mouth all the way down to the other end. And put your hands on your hips and appreciate your hips and appreciate your knees and your ankles and your feet, just maybe move your hands and your feet and just appreciate them because there are people in this community right now that have challenges with all the parts of these bodies. Um, and we are praying for each other. I, we literally have people that have given up parts of their body for other people, right? We've had organ donors in this group. So with gratitude and with hope and with prayers for resilience and peace and healing for all the parts of our bodies, and all the connecting parts that wire all these together, our nerves and our tissues and our muscles and our bones and our skin. We are vulnerable, but we are creative and resilient and we give thanks for these bodies and the journeys that they bring us on and that they bring us to each other. Are there other prayers of concern this morning? I will name the great concern, which is for a peaceful transition of power, for people to be vigilant, for people to not go astray anymore, to choose leaders wisely, to listen closely to those who have your best interests at heart and care for what happens to each of you and all of us together. And with prayers for those that ask for justice for parts of our world as Martin Luther King did in his time. For prayers for our leaders and all of us in these times. There are some prayers of celebration. I would certainly invite any of yours too, but Lori Kinsey shares that her grandbaby was born she has a new grandbaby, Lucy Marie, and we know that Steve and Colleen have a new, new grandbaby that we were also celebrating a few weeks ago, and I believe they've had a chance to see their grandchild. Uh, are there other prayers of celebration that anybody wants to share? Feel free to unmute if you do. Kevin wants to. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> I'm grateful because prayer is the most powerful tool. I'm grateful because my pain has brought me closer to God. Um, I'm grateful because God uses bad for good, and I'm grateful for the sunshine. All right. That's a well-rounded prayer. Are there any other prayers that I'm missing here? Well, let's give thanks for the snow that finally came to us and for good use of it. Judy, do you want to pray? 
I was just going to say we're thankful for the, our neighbor Bruce next door is outside in our yard right now using a snowblower clearing our driveway for us. <laughs> All right, so gratitude, <laughs> with gratitude for good neighbors and how we take care of each other, right? Um, whether we're close or far away, we have people from multiple states who are here loving each other and honoring each other by simply showing up for each other. And so even that is a great gift. Um, yeah, so prayers for gratitude. Let's remember gratitude in these days. It helps give us perspective. And if you think you're feeling overwhelmed, stop and find three things to be grateful for and take a deep breath and seek out some sunlight and try to get a change in perspective. We're going to look at one of the prayers by Martin Luther King. Oh, Sandy, go for it. I can't hear you. There you Sorry, go. I just, I. I wanted to say, and I totally blanked it because I was doing something else. Um, I wanted to thank everybody. And I'm again, very grateful for my New Hampshire community for all the cards I got when my, uh, with the passing of my dad, it's gonna make me cry. I was very touched by that. I did not expect that. And um, it was very, very heartwarming to, to get those. So thank you so much to those of you who sent those to me again, the way that we love each other and we show up for each other. Hmm. So let's, let's look at a prayer by Martin Luther King now. I'm gonna share the words with you and um, feel free to unmute and let's read this together. This is a hope that we, we can all embrace. God, we thank you. For the inspiration, the inspiration of Jesus. Jesus. That we Grant that, that we love you with all our hearts, all all our hearts souls, and minds, souls and minds, and love our neighbors, love our neighbors, as, we love as we love ourselves, ourselves even our enemies. And, our and, our and we ask you, God, 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 in these days, the emotional tension, and the problems of the world, the gigantic and extent. And chaotic, 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 and read together the words as we were taught them. Our Father. Father. Our Father. 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 And now, if you would kindly mute yourselves, we are going to have a reprisal of Ose Shalom by the choir.
And I want to thank, of course, our amazing choir and our music leaders, Alan and Billy, for working with all of our great volunteers. We have new choir members, so our choir is getting bigger and coming in from multiple parts of the country to share their voices with all of us. So we have some wonderful songs coming up this year, and we'll be looking forward to that. At this time, let us turn to scripture, the, the wisdom of the deacons, and is that we're going to be studying birds for the next few weeks because we do need something to look forward to. And it's appropriate this week that we begin with the dove. And so here are two texts that talk to us about doves and their connection to peace. Genesis chapter 8 verses 6 through 11. At the end of days, at the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground, but the dove found no place to set its foot and it returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. He waited another seven days and again he sent out the dove from the ark and the dove came back to him in the evening and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So new and new that the waters had subsided from the earth. And in Matthew 3 verses 16 through 17 when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And finally, from Matthew 5, verse 9, from the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. So ends the reading. And I ask you to pray with me now, please. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In particular, I was really searching for a passage that would help us meditate on a peaceful transition of power. And we do have an expert among us, retired General David Perkins. And so I asked the Perkins family for a passage 
that they felt best embodied that prayer. And that's where we get our excerpt from the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And it's an incredibly powerful verse on which to meditate this week when we think that we are honoring the life of Martin Luther King. And when we think that we are coming up on an inauguration, unlike any that we have ever attended before. And we know that this is real because we had to lock the doors of our church this week. For five years, we have been open 24 seven and never intentionally locked the doors of the church. Even through COVID, we have stayed open. And because of concerns for safety and because target um, churches could be targets this week, with concern for those who might go in and out just to do their daily business, we are keeping the doors closed for four days. And this is where we need to believe the most and remember the most that the church is not a building. The church is not locked up. Because when you look at each other, you are looking at the church. The church lives in you. And if something happened to that building, the church would not die. The church would be embodied in each of you. With all of our prayers about our body, and when we say the body of Christ, we mean each other. And we especially need to remember that right now. Because when we think about the symbol of the dove, we hear two stories. We hear the story of the Holy Spirit that comes down and it comes down in the shape of the dove. But how did that dove become translated into a symbol of peace? In the early days of Christianity, they were oppressed. The Roman government was out to end any type of cult that had figures that might challenge their power and we know the executed Christ himself because even in his peaceful living in the ways that he saw the importance of other human beings he challenged the rulers so much that they put him to death but death does not have the final word in this story closed doors do not have the final word in this story Early Christians chose the symbol of the dove carrying the olive branch because they felt like they too were in an ark and that all around them the seas were rising up and the world was being swallowed up and everything was peril except each other and the company of those who chose to understand they were in the same boat together. And so they held on to the promise that the world would not end, that the world would continue, and that the dove would return finally with an olive branch. And that was their symbol of peace. And it translated from being a symbol of peace in the soul used in their early sepulchers and funerary art to become a symbol of civil peace. And we still use that symbol of civil peace even today. Peace is work. Peace isn't something where the dove just lands and goes out looking. The dove grabs something and holds on to it and brings it back. We work for peace for each other and for ourselves and our children and our children's children and this entire planet. Let us hold on to the symbol of the dove and know that we are in this boat together, but the floods will lower, the earth will become ours, and we will find the community that we need if we can simply believe and look at each other and see in each other that we are all children of God. This is the prayer that we just prayed that was raised up by Martin Luther King. And if you remember Robert Atzi, who was a guest speaker for us a few years ago, a Muslim scholar, he wrote just today and quoted Juno Diaz as he thought about the work of Martin Luther King. And he said, you don't love a country by turning a blind eye to its crimes and to a problem. 
the way that you love a country is by seeing everything that it's done wrong and all of its mistakes and still thinking that it's beautiful and it's worthy. That is the same kind of redemptive love that looks at us and sees us as maybe broken and messy and imperfect, but also beautiful and worthy of compassion and second and third and endless chances. Love will show up again and again and again. And the call to peace and the work of peace is to meet each other with love. To meet each other with love. For the next four days, don't let the closed doors of the church mean that your faith and your hope is locked up. Be the embodied love of the church and be present to each other in the ways that you can be, whether it's sending cards to somebody like Sandy or bringing a meal or giving somebody a ride, the way you've been doing right through COVID, do it even more now and listen for the church bell on Tuesday and be hopeful on Wednesday and meet each other with love every day of this year and all the time that we share together on this earth. I wanna offer you now three symbols that came from Pablo Picasso of the Dove. He was famous for his peace coasters that were used in peace conferences all over the world. The first, is the blue dove of peace. And then we move to yet another dove. This is probably one of the most famous Picasso doves, but there were endless versions. And the final dove that I want you to see is the dove that flies between the entwined hands of humanity. Again, peace is in our hands, is in our bodies. It doesn't live in a building. It lives in us. May we be the messengers of peace in our time. Thanks be to God. And I would turn you from that meditation to the simple reminder that we, as we make a commitment to each other, part of our commitment is in our giving and that we ask that you will faithfully continue your giving. Visit us on jxncc.org if you want to make a donation online, send in an envelope. I'm not gonna encourage you to try to go in the church for the next few days because you can't grab a, an envelope that way, but we hope that by Thursday we'll be back in regular working order and you can come in and out of the church and drop off your pledges that way if you also wish. And so I'm going to bring us to the close of our Martin Luther King observation for this weekend. As we sing together, we are one in the spirit. The words will be up on the screen. You can remain muted, but we'll have music playing along for you. So please enjoy singing.
we're going to return to one of our beloved traditions, which is we're going to sing ourselves out with the benediction. So the benediction words will be up on the screen and you are welcome to sing along. <laughs> going to invite um, a brief interlude of music and then we can all unmute and say hello to each other and chat for a few minutes because this has been a tumultuous couple of weeks and I'm sure we need some check-ins. <laughs> 